Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'll teach you the easiest and fastest way to achieve this animation in After Effects. You can download the working file in the description below. Feel free to take it and follow along. Let's get started. Now I'm in After Effects with a dark blue gradient background. Let's go into the main composition here. First, we can create the animation of the speed line. Let's go to this pen tool here. We can draw a line over here, just a straight line. And the stroke color can be in white. Points is going to be 10 pixels. Now let's go to animate this line here. Add a trim path effect. Let's go to the trim path effect. At zero second, let's make sure the start and end percentage is going to be zero. Hit the stopwatch for two keyframes and then go forward 10 frames and then make these value to 100%. Now we can select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's go to the graph editor and adjust the curves a little bit to give it more energy. Let's go back and then we can select the two keyframes on the start property, drag it forward a few frames to delay the start of this animation. And now we're going to have a effect like this. That's going to be our speed line. That looks good. And now we need to duplicate this line animation here. Select the layer, command D for duplicate. And I can drag it to a different position, maybe something over here. Duplicate again. Now we have four lines. And then we can change the length of each one to be a little bit different from each other. And then we can do for the fourth line, we can make it shorter. So for the first one, I think I think I want the first one to be the longest. So drag this one longer. If we preview the animation, this is what we have. That looks good as a speed line. Now I just need to, you know, change the color a little bit. We have the color image here. So for the first one, I want it to be in this purple color. And then for this short one, I want it to be in this green color. And now I just want to stagger the layer a little bit so they don't start at the same time. Something like that works. Now I can select the four layers, Command Shift C to pre-compose it. Speed line one, click on OK. Now we have a speed line group. That looks good. Let's just duplicate this one, Command D. Let's move it to a different position. Command D again. That looks good. Although I do need to, you know, stagger these so that they're not coming in at the same time. Select the five layers again, Command C, and then Speed Line Group. Let's duplicate this one and then drag it to the right hand side. Now we got something interesting here. Hit S on the keyboard and then I want to flip this new speed line here, put negative 100 on in the scale X scale property. So we can horizontally flip the layer. However, I don't want it to be too symmetrical. So I can either stagger the animation, something like this, or I can create another variation of the speed line group. I think it looks fine right now. All I need to do is duplicate these two layers, Command D, and then just randomly place them again. 
at a different position, so the animation is more continuous. That looks good. Duplicate these four again, Command-D. Put it over here. I think that looks good to me. Right now, it only lasts for one second. So all I need to do is just keep duplicating. That looks good to me. Now I can select all of them. Command Shift C to pre-compose. Call this speed line final. Now what I need to do is to add a circle element to go travel from the bottom to the top. Hit on this new composition. Just call this circle scene. And let's create the height to be around 3,500 pixels. So it's longer than the main composition. Just drag it in here. Now what I need to do is I need to draw a motion path. So go to the pen tool, draw a motion path. I want the path to be subtle, very subtle motion path. It doesn't have a lot of curve in it. I think something like that should work. And then we need to go down to the content shape path, and then we can click on this stopwatch. We can apply this path onto the position property of this main circle. But first, we need to make sure the anchor point of this circle is in the center. Let's go to this pen behind tool and then drop the anchor point in the center of the circle. Now we can copy this one keyframe, command C, and then go to P on the keyboard, select the position property, and then command V to paste it in. Now we have the circle travel along this path here. The next thing I want to do is I want to make this mo this path a motion path or a trail of the circle. So to do that, I need to add a trim path effect. So we need to hit the stopwatch of the start and end property and then make sure everything is at zero at the beginning. Go to the end of the circle animation and then change everything to 100%. And now we can stagger the start keyframes a little bit, a couple frames. That way we can have a motion trail like this. That works. Another thing we could do is duplicate command D and then we can manipulate the start and end and also the offset of the trim path effect over here to get a second trail after the first trail. So if I go to the offset and then I change the offset value here, you can see I got a disconnect of the trail over here and then all I need to do is to make sure the trail is shorter, something like this. So it just travels along with the first trail and there's a disconnection between the two that looks a little bit more complex, give it more of a complex look. That feels good to me. And then let's go back to the main composition. We can now hide this main circle or we can delete it and we can drop the circle scene inside the main composition. So as the now what we can do is we can move this circle scene above as the animation starts we have the circle coming into the scene and then go to peep for the position property hit a stopwatch as it's animating up want the composition to go down like this. So what I want to do is at the end of the scene here, maybe around two seconds, I might want it to drop down a little bit more. 
and then drop down a little bit more here and then go up to give it more illusion that the circle is traveling very hard to catch up with the speed of the background. Something like that. So it goes up and then comes down a little bit and then it goes up again, come down a little bit more, and then shoot up. However, I also want the circle to be in the center of the composition. So I'm just changing and manipulating the position property of this comp. Yeah, something like that. And then all I need to do is select all the keyframe, right click, go to at the end keyframe assistant, select easy ease, and then go to the graph editor. I want to give the circle a little bit more energy. So I want to manipulate the speed graph to make the speed a little bit higher. And at the end, I want the circle to shoot up like this to reach the max speed. Let's see what the animation looks like. I think the wiggle is too much. Maybe I need to tone it down a little bit. So over here, instead, I want to tone down the speed graph a little bit more. Drag it back here like this to smooth the curve a little bit more. So the travel is smoother. It doesn't feel like there's a wiggle to it. Let's see what it looks like. Yep. And then at the end, I want it to shoot up like this. Like this, yeah. That looks good to me. So this is our animation now. That looks good. And then at this scene over here, I just want this circle to trigger something else trigger a bunch of other circles basically so what we need to do is we need to draw a bunch of other circles let's try like one circle like this and then draw another one make it larger we can do the fill instead of the stroke So what I want to do is at the end of two seconds, I want the circle to come in the center to trigger this ripple effect. Something like this. That looks good to me. All I need to do is go over here, make sure I got all these new circles, hit left square bracket to cut it around two seconds. And then I can, first of all, go to the alignment tool, make sure they're all aligned in the center. I want to zoom in and make sure it's all aligned in the center. And then I want to animate the scale property. Let's say for this one here, let's hit a stopwatch for the keyframe scale and then go forward maybe 20 frames. Hit the scale property again, change the initial property to zero. Now it's going to grow from 0 to 59%. I want to do the same thing. Select all of them, hit S on the keyboard, add a keyframe at the end, and then at the beginning, change it to 0. Now we can select all the keyframe. Right-click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go to the graph editor. Let's do an extreme easing curve. like this and then let's see what it looks like what I need to do now is I want the background to disappear the speed lines to disappear around two seconds to trigger this ripple effect so I want to make sure it disappears around here I need to go into the speed line final 
and then make sure I delete the ones or hide the layers that we don't need. Maybe this one as well. That works. I think the animation works well. However, the last thing is not that good looking. So I kind of want to manipulate the size a little bit more to make it more good looking. And the last thing I want to add is a like a wave in line around here. So to do that, let's go to the pen tool and then let's draw a line like this. Let's turn off the fill, let's get the stroke. Maybe let's do 10. And then let's draw another one here. Yeah, something like that works. So what I need to do is cut it around the same time when the second scene starts. And then I want to animate these two lines here. Just go to the content shape path and then hit a keyframe on the path. This is going to be the final state of the animation. I'll change the keyframe to align with the other circles when it stop animating around here. Now at the beginning, I wanted to start slower, something like this. And then I want this one to start slower. And then maybe around here. Yeah, I think that works. It's subtle, but it's going to add some interest. Now I need to do is Command Shift C to pre-compose these two lines. And then make sure we cut it over here. Command D, hit S on the keyboard, change the scale X axis to negative 100. So we have a duplicate to make it symmetrical. Now I just need to make the line at the bottom to be longer. Now I just need to go inside and change the animation to give it a little bit of energy. So the curve is going to be something like this. Yeah, that works. We can cut the animation when this stops around 3 seconds here. Hit N on the keyboard. Let's preview this one. I think overall it looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do is to add some glow effect. Let's go to layer, add new. Let's put in a adjustment layer. Name this one glow. We can do a Gaussian blur. Maybe change it to 20%. And then let's add in a curve. And drag the curve to give it more contrast like that, and then change the adjustment layer transparency to 20% or 40. So you can see the before after. If I turn on this adjustment layer, it gives a little bit of glow onto these lines and the whole scene. It also gives a little bit more vibrance. And that's it, that's your final animation. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We will be publishing more After Effects tutorials like this every single week. In addition, we also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our community. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.